Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video on how I'm doing my live stream. I finally got all this stuff figured out. Um, I did want to give a couple of shout outs to a couple of different people. Uh, one was Podcast Masters. They had did a video on how to use logic through your OBS. Uh, let me shut these effects off real quick. Um, cause I'm got my, that's part of the, the cool thing that I wanted to show you guys about this. Okay, so check it out. Um, I am working to do live streams on Facebook, but I'm a musician, right? So um, I want to be able to sing, play sax, have live tracks, and also be able to have effects on my voice and on my sax for while I'm doing the live stream and be able to hear it real time and just know that it's getting out to the, the live stream correctly, okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple things that I did. Um, a podcast masters, they had a video on how to get logic to OBS and they said use a, a, a software called Soundflower, which was really cool. Uh, just a software called Soundflower. I'm on my Mac. Um, and then you create an aggregate, um, component. I'll show that in a second. <coughs> but, um, so just a shout out to podcast masters, but anyway, um, they are not important in this scenario. So check it out. Okay, so I got my standard OBS. I'm gonna switch oh, uh, screens to my to my screen here. Uh, so I want you to be able to see what I'm looking at. So I have uh, a couple of different things. Let me break this down. Let me break this down. Okay, I'll put uh, I'm gonna put my this over here and my Logic setup here. Okay, in my Logic setup, I have um, tracks. I have um, vo uh, vocals, and then I also have a sax for my sax mic. Okay, so check it out. On this here, I'm going to kind of go straight into Logic over here. Um, I have a couple things going on. Right now in my preferences, I'm going to be using, uh, temporarily using OBS, even though it's supposed to be OBS. Um, okay, so I just... Okay, sorry, I lost everybody. I'm not sure. I think it was temporary using it because of uh, something else I did earlier. But OB, I'm using my OBS one, which is a an aggregate um, audio device that I made earlier. So my aggregate audio device is basically Soundflower, which is the the uh, software that I was explained to download. And Soundflower, Soundflower basically allows you to create an, an output to OBS. I think that's the main, one of the main reasons. So I added this to my audio box, which is, that's my interface that I'm using, my, my PreSonus audio box. And so I select those two, okay? So now basically my input and outputs are in uh, one, two, three, and four for my audio box, and then five and six for my sound flower. Okay, and then you create one thing and I just titled it OBS so that when I use it later, I know which one to get to. So I'll go back to audio real quick here. I select my OBS, hit apply, and uh, now it's using that as my audio input output. Okay, so as you can see, my vocals are on channel one. Um, the only thing I didn't understand, and maybe if you guys can put it in the comments, something uh, you might have seen, is that the only way for me to get the audio to actually go out is by hitting the input monitoring button and the record button at the same time. So if I, you'll see this, as I, when I unrelease, and then as soon as I hit my record button, it's back on. Same thing with my... And so, yeah, so it's weird. I got to have both of those on at the same time. I don't know if it's something in my settings um, or not, but that's how mine is set up. I'm using Logic uh, X Pro, you know, the newest version, whatever the newest version is. Um, <coughs> you can see, obviously, that it is clearly going through to my desktop audio, and I'm going to show you my settings, um, the output. Let's see, the output. No, no, let's see, audio. I'm using desktop audio device Soundflower cha two channel, so that's what's getting, that's what OBS is getting from Logic, which is the reason why it's able to send it to this live stream. So, 
in actuality, what's going on? I have, like I said, I got these vocals, a sax, and also have effects. Um, I'm going to switch over to my the screen here. Show you my effects channel here. Um, I show you that I have uh, just different compression and things in line. But you know, when you want to use you know reverbs and delays, you want them on a bus. So this is what I did. I have this channel here. I'm going to switch it to single, and then we'll go to. Let me show you. I'll okay, select. Check this one. Okay. So this is my my vocal channel. I have a bus eight and nine on. Yeah, I got bus eight and nine on. And so you could hear the effects going through really nicely, okay? Um, but check it out. I think the only reason I'm hearing the other one is because I got this one on. Check. Okay, yeah. My my sax mic was on. It's sitting over here in the corner. Um, so right now I have no effects on. But what I did was, here's channel 8, and uh, this one's just a... This one's a small plate, and then this one's more of a, a bigger vocal plate, that kind of thing. But anyway, I, I, I left my output on stereo output, okay? But my buses, they're also on stereo. So this means now that I can use my same headphone output of my PreSonus input box that I'm using as like normal. But I'm also running a bus to, sound, to the Soundflower output. Okay, so channels five and six. So that's how I'm getting the effects to actually go through. So if I didn't have these effects on, you wouldn't be able to hear them in the, I can hear them in my headphones, but you probably can't hear them in the live stream. So when I do this, boom, they're back in, they're full, they're clear. If I shut this one off, it shuts off all my audio. It shuts off all my audio when I, when I hit that button. So you got audio. Okay, there you go. It's not getting it a full. Now it's getting it a, a nice full, a full amount. So basically, I'm running my stereo output, but then I'm running a bus to five and six. So that allows me to send the audio to Soundflower, which is getting to OBS, without having to lose my effects in my real-time headphones, so I can actually play comfortably and sing comfortably. Um, and 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 there you go. Um, so now check this out. Another thing I got going on. Let me move this screen over um, to show you. This is on my vocals, right? But and then also I have my sax over here. I'll let you guys hear that. Let me just uh, check, check, what do? So obviously it's a different, a different setup. Uh, mute that. But over here, this is where I'm going to be playing tracks from. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why I have a compression on there, but anyway, I have this set to input three and four. Now, in my Personas, I have four inputs, four outputs. Okay, um, so I'm using my, I'm I'm doing the input three and four. So on my Personas, on the physical hardware, I took an output of the three and four, and ran it into inputs three and four. So hardware, it's a quarter inch output of three and four, and quarter inch input two, three and four. Okay. So what I'm doing that for is because in my to play my tracks I'm using my DJ Pro app. So as you can see, I'll hit this. This is just a little, just my imagination, right? You'll you'll see that it's running into my channel one, which is my backing tracks. Now I can bring it down, and you should not be hearing it anymore in the mix, and it's out. So. So I can now run my tracks from here. And what I did to send it to the Soundflower is by putting on five and six. So I'm gonna pull Soundflower, I'm gonna pull sound, uh, OBS over here. You see that it's bumping. Okay, so you see how it's bumping. Now if I shut it off, you hear my, that's my vocal right there, but the audio is off, that's the music here. No music. Click it on, boom, there it goes. So by bussing out five and six on all these channels, it sends it immediately to check one, two, and two. I can hear myself in my headphones, but right now it's not being recorded. What
what I said was, I can hear myself in my headphones, but it wasn't being recorded. <coughs> so that's how you, that's that's a way to do it. Uh, as far as the live stream, that's a just an easy setup. That I means that's a basic setup. Um, you get your key, you know, you put it in your whatever. But this is about how getting to getting your logic to go into your into your OBS to be able to do stream, but with full effects and all that kind of stuff, being able to hear yourself and your effects, because a lot of people that are doing podcasts or these kind of live streams are not necessarily doing, <coughs> they're not necessarily doing a performance with, with, you know, with effects, with time delay effects, you know, delays, reverbs, things like that. So now granted, you could have, I could have just put a reverb or something on the channel. Here, let me shut this song off. Um, so I could have easily done this um, channel here and put effects in here, but that's not the proper way to, you know, to do your effects when it comes to music. You you want them on a bus so that you can, you know, pan them or do whatever you can. It's not, it doesn't affect the lead. It doesn't affect the sig the clear signal. Um, and for all you audio people, you already know that you put effects on in a, in a set. So, um, so for example. If I'm talking very clearly right now, if I'm talking very clearly right now and I put a reverb right here, it's already, it's going to saturate the clear signal. And so the output is going to only get uh, a saturated, you know, uh, a, a, a signal with reverb all mixed in it. There, you're stuck with it. So when you do it this way and you add a, so you can hear that little, what is that? I think I got a, uh, it's not going to tell me. Usually it tells me, but anyway, um, it's a just a, it's a quick tiny reverb, and then this is my bigger hall reverb. So, as you can see, that's how it works in a better scenario. Um, <coughs> but in the DJ program, let me show you this real quick. In the DJ program, when I go into pre preferences on the DJ program, I had to send it. I had to use the OBS. I guess I technically could have just used my audio box, my personas, because it's still channel three and four, but I picked it. But I, I send, I'm sending my OBS signal two, three, and four, not number two, but I'm sending it through channels three and four. That's my output. Now, the other one is the, on the, the pre-queuing. I'm not DJing or anything, so I'm not worried about mixing or pre-queuing or hearing in my headphones a certain track and blah, 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 getting ready for the next track. I'm not doing all that. So. <clears throat> for now, I'm just sending the output of my DJ program to the output of three and four, and that's why I, that's why it's sending the output cables, plugging in two quarter inch cables in the output and sending them to the input of channels three and four. That's how I'm able to use channel three and four over here, as you can see. So that's it. Um, that's just uh, how I did it. That's how I was able to get it going. Um, I'll try to edit down this video so it's not as long. Um, but there you go. Any questions or any comments? If you have a, an idea of why I have to use the input and record buttons on all the time, I have no idea why that is. Um, please let me know. That'd be cool. But that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate it. And don't forget to check out my live stream. Uh, my live stream that's going to be every Tuesday and Thursday um, from... 11 a.m. to, I don't know, about a half hour, 40 minutes each time. But uh, so that's it. But uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. This has uh, really been a cool chance to be able to show you guys something that I'm doing. And that's it. Peace.